At the end of life, we will not be asked if we have been believers, but if we have been credible, that is, if we have been true witnesses. Saints are role models. Their lives are not only inspiring, but are also blueprints to real happiness and ultimately eternal life. Currently, there are more than 10,000 people recognized as saints in the Catholic Church. This weekend, famous people such as Charles de Foucault and little-known ones like Lazzaro de Vasayam Pillai from Tamil Nadu in India are elevated into the status of sainthood. The lives and backgrounds from the 10 different saints are very diverse. One thing they do have in common, however, is their zeal for evangelization, a topic close to Pope Francis's heart. We're here at the Congregation for the Causes of Saints with Cardinal Marcello Semeraro, who is the prefect of this congregation and has sat down with us to talk about the process for how to become a saint, but also what the lives of the saints could mean for us today. Many blessed individuals who will be canonized in May have lived quite recently in the 19th and 20th century. One of them is Charles de Foucault, who has the so-called fame of holiness. But the signs of holiness are different from popularity. Some saints are really not attractive to the public eye at all. Father de Foucault is also a figure who sought hiding, not popularity. He was a convert, became a priest, and followed Christ by being with the most humble, the most forgotten. His space was not the big city, but the desert. But yet he is called the universal brother, as he became a brother to all, a brother imitating Christ. Cardinal Zamoraro is convinced that the saints in general are important role models for our times. Their voices should be heard today. That is true of the other nine blessed to be canonized alongside Charles de Foucault. There are four women and six men. Every new saint has led a different yet inspiring life. Most founded their own religious community, which is still active until this day. The Cardinal showed us also the room where matters of potential sainthood are being discussed and explained the process. The process of sainthood starts in the local church, which perceives the scent discerns the reputation of holiness. We had in the Middle Ages a proverb, vox populi, vox dei, the voice of the people, the voice of God. We need a lot of caution when we apply it. Sometimes there is a vox populi, but it is not the vox dei. It is not the voice of God. We have the task of examining. It is a word that also Pope Francis, as a Jesuit, frequently uses. Discerning means separating the good from the bad, collecting what is best, reviewing it. And this is the task of the congregation. And once this discernment is done, all the material is examined on three levels. The first level is that of historians and theologians. The second level, if this is exceeded, is that of members, bishops, and cardinals who examine in one of their meetings the material. Then they submit their findings to the judgment of the Pope. After these examinations on different levels, the waiting period starts. Cardinal Semeraro refers to it as waiting for the finger of God. The one thing that is needed to seal a cause for sainthood is a miracle, unless the soon-to-be saint was a martyr. Now we are waiting for some signal, which tells us you have judged well. And this, in the ordinariest of cases, is the miracle. There is a situation, a circumstance, in which the miracle is not required, at least at a first level, and it is martyrdom, because martyrdom is the first form of holiness and the one the Church has recognized. Pope Francis seems to have a real heart for true witnesses as he created 909 new saints in only nine years. Their stories are fascinating and inspire the faithful to lead themselves a life well lived and holy. For EWTN News In Depth, Andreas Turnhauser.